welcome to Think Differently. This is Sharon Weinstein and my colleague, Dina Redinger, and we are so excited. We have great news today. Dina, do you want to start us off? Yes, I am so excited to be here with you, Sharon, and I'm so excited to talk about our new book, Think Differently. We are changing the game. You know, I've been down here on vacation in Florida, and we actually had the opportunity to visit NASA, and I just want to state, you know, Lieutenant General Susan Helms had talked about what she valued the most in her career, and she said she found ways to do things differently, and Sharon, that's what we've done. We found a way to do things differently and creating meta leaders differently, so back to you. Well, I think that what's really exciting and what people need to know is what makes this book different from other books? There are so many books out there on leadership, Dina. There's one after another after another. When I look at Goodreads and other places, it looks as if there are new releases every week. But we've done something totally different. We have taken the term diagnostic thinking and the concepts behind it and created something that is so unusual that allows us to unpack the challenges that women leaders face to create an opportunity and to offer solutions which other people don't do. The other people are just conceptual. In every book that I read, there are concepts. There is no me. Yes. There's no step-by-step, this is what I do now. There are no real life examples. And when I look at what others have said in advanced praise, those who read our book and review, they all talked about that whole concept of real life examples, the truisms, the looking for and at the truth that made our stories so real and projected yeah. so well on the printed page. Yep. And, you know, when you look at the book, there's 18 chapters in here specifically around things that we experienced, mistakes that we've made. We've actually have women all over the globe capture these things that really get in the way of moving forward, both in their career and their life. The problem is many times we don't know what we don't know. So going back to your point, Sharon, when you talk about a book that has concepts, and there's a lot of great books, so I want to acknowledge all the authors all over the world yeah. that have these amazing books. But one of the things people are looking for is the how. We give them that. We give them the how. We give them the strategies and help them move forward, which is critical. And we demonstrate those strategies strategies through vetted solutions. Yeah. This yes. has already been done. Heavens, how long have you been doing diagnostic thinking right now? Yeah, I've been doing it for sure. six years. Yes, yeah, six years. And I created it because I made my own mistakes throughout my own career. And when I retired, you know, looking back and saying, okay, how can we make a difference for other women? We captured the process. It's been vetted regardless of where you are in the world, whether you're in India, Germany, Switzerland, United States, Singapore, China, whether you're Asian, Black, white, it doesn't matter. We all suffer from the same broken thinking and we actually give give you strategies on how to fix broken thinking. And thus the title, Think Differently, 18 Strategies to Fix Broken Thinking. And in the book, which is divided in two parts, in part one, we spell out the word diagnostic with a focus on one letter for each of 10 chapters. The real core message here is that leaders don't know what they don't know, but they know. So think about it. How many times have you been frustrated with your boss, your human resources support or lack of support, looking for an answer, solving those gut-wrenching problems that keep you up at night? Yes. And this is a real challenge, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. And for years, I think for many times, I know in my own career, felt like, you know, there's a competition. If there's an open position, if there's an opportunity, there's always in com- competition, but there's really, there's really not. The only competition that you have is making sure that you're solving the right problem at the right time and having that capability of influencing what you want next. And what are the strategies? How do you do that? And if you sit on an island by yourself, you're really kind of self-sabotaging yourself. We know that. And we just can't unpack some of that subconscious thinking that we have because of prior events, our experiences and our beliefs will dictate how we move forward. We unpack that. It's vetted. So we can help you with that. Well, what's even more important now is when you talk about that concept or the metaphor, sitting on an island alone, 
think about what we have faced over the past two and a half, almost three years with COVID and people who have been alone, who have acclimated to different work environments and no longer feel a part of the team or feel as if they are being trusted or that their voice is being heard simply because of the difference in where and how they're working. Even as we return to hybrid, all of these issues will only escalate, won't they? Yep, absolutely. And, you know, what we've experienced over the last three years is different. The whole world experienced pandemic times, obviously. We all have to approach leadership in a much different way. So what's happening today um, is going to take a different way of leading. It's going to take a different way of thinking if you want different results. That's what's changed. The whole world was changed. And they're all searching for some of those real gritty, how do I move from point A to point B? How can I make that happen for myself? How can I help other people get there as well? And that's critical. And we can't go on alone. This is a journey that takes a tribe of people to do this. And that whole concept of searching is so consistent with the term diagnostic. You know that I come from a clinical background. I think of it in terms of let's diagnose what the issues are. Well, then we move from diagnostic to the real world of thinking. That's where we take back control. We hold space. We inspire others. We maintain our focus. We inspect our truth. We avoid complacency. We respect the word no. And that's where we get involved into a group. And it's that group that allows us, isn't it, to solve today's problems. Yeah. And, you know, I don't really think that anybody truly feels 100% safe. I don't really know if anybody's ever truly felt that until we started creating these small groups that we can put people together so we can create that psychological safety. Um, A lot of people can't even allow themselves to think differently until you feel safe enough to do that. You know, Sharon, we were talking about this earlier today about, you know, this old concept of failing forward or falling forward. And I can tell you, people are not really in tune to to thinking, okay, I'm going to decide I'm going to fail or fall forward, however that may look, you know, because the world is very critical right now. And if you, you know, make a lot of mistakes, you know, you are being judged. And I do think that everybody's looking at you. We talked a lot about this in the last couple of sessions that we had around being a meta leader. You know, people are all watching you. People don't feel safe. You're exactly right. And this might be a really good time, Dina, to move ahead into the couple of slides that we'd like to share with viewers today so that they get a better concept of what's in it for me. Why should I read this book? And what should I do after I've read the book? What's next? Go ahead, Dina. Yeah. So, you know, we talk about being the ultimate meta leader. Well, it's different. I'm telling you, it's unprecedented times and it's going to take some unprecedented leadership thinking to move forward. Very, very different. Let's go to the next slide here. I'm hoping that this will move. There we go. Sharon, I'm going to let you cover this piece because it's a big deal right now. The psychology of a decision. Why is this so, why is making decisions so hard for people? Think about the human brain, and this is a brilliant depiction of the human brain, but think about the different areas of the brain and what is going on in your brain at any one given time. There are so many aspects that contribute to our ability to see the future, to see the present for what it is, to decide what we need to do next, and to actually make decisions. There are so many aspects that go into it, things like habits and thoughts, How we feel at the moment and how we feel now might not reflect how we're feeling later on once that decision has been made. Many times we follow our intuition or our gut feeling. We use judgment. We foster insecurities, many of which evolve as a result of whatever happened to us as we were growing up. Things that might have happened in our past that now control our own story. So we all have a story to be told. We all have beliefs innate beliefs that allow us to do what we do and to do it well. When these dueling narratives come together, it requires a different approach, a meta approach to looking at what is next. Go on, Dina. No, and I think you hit it right on the head, right? We have narratives that go on all the time. And you spoke to it just a minute ago. Our experiences and our beliefs 
you know, our experiences, should I say, create our beliefs and our beliefs create those narratives. So if you are on an island and you have a narrative going on and it could be the lack of confidence around decisions, fear for making the right decisions, fear of the implication it has on your career, fear of implication it has on your family, however it is, everything that you see within this brain actually has an impact on how you make decisions. I'm going to go to the next slide here too as well. Let's see. And I'll have you cover this a little bit because you spoke to this a little bit. So Sharon, I'm going to hand that back to you. Talk about this less rational and, you know, the less instinctual things of how we make decisions and how we experience life. Exactly. First of all, we don't use all of our brain all of the time. There is so much that is virtually unused and just waiting to be tapped for our futures, for our respective futures. So we have a less rational way of thinking and a less instinctual way of thinking. When we're less rational, we're looking at our creative thinking. Many of us are many, many more creative than others. You think, well, she can draw, she can paint, she can sing, she can write music, she can do all of those things that I cannot do. How is she able to do that? She can write, other people cannot. We store a lot of the information around that within the brain, but a lot of it all reflects back on the concept of fear. Am I good enough? Will I ever be good enough? Have I ever been good enough for my parents, for my caregivers, for my teachers, for those who raised me, for those in school who taught me, for my family, whatever that family relationship might look like? What are those fears that are causing me to think? in an out of the body experience because fear is driving my decision. Fear is taking control. We also have what we refer to as learned behaviors. So those things that we have learned along the way. I smile sometimes when I look at this slide and it reminds me of when I was in nursing school and every Friday at two o'clock in the afternoon, all of the students had to put on a clean white apron, leave all the patients behind, walk across the street to the dormitory, and be prepared with our clean white aprons and spotless hands to serve tea to our instructors. And it wasn't tea from a tea bag, it was brewed tea. The idea was to learn behaviors, social behaviors, that maybe some of us never learned as children in terms of how to behave in public and what to do next, how to behave in the workplace. So we have those learned behaviors that cause a smile to come to my face every time I think of it years later, and our instinctual behaviors those that are based on gut, on what we do, when we're ready to fall and we fall forward with our hands first to protect our face, not realizing that in the process, we're going to break our wrists. Right. When we do something to prevent that fall, to prevent that accident, to prevent that misstep in the work environment, it's going to cause our demise and allow us to think fast within that setting or any work setting that we entail. So leadership can be an out-of-body experience when fear is pushing and driving us beyond our control. Yeah, and you said something too. We, when you talk about learned behaviors, many times the places where we've stored our really good decisions, right? We've stored those decisions. We fast forward. Now we've become leaders. We are quick to make a decision and we revert to back to something that is similar to something we've experienced before. It really does change how you are becoming a meta leader when you are really not learning how to actually dump some of those banks that we have to and being able to create new neuroplasticities for becoming the meta leader. You're going to have to have the right environment, the safe environment and the right process to be able to make sure you're solving the right problem at the right time. I'm 100% convinced as leaders, we solve the wrong problem close to 100% of the time. By unpacking this, putting the process to think differently and allowing some strategies to move forward, success is much quicker and people are much more confident. And so leadership is an out-of-body experience if you are not aware of what's happening when you're trying to make better decisions as a leader. It's absolutely critical you understand this type of slide that Sharon's talking about right here. You're on mute, Sharon. And in our approach, Dina, thinking differently is just the first step. It's that first step that takes us to become a meta leader, isn't it? 
Yes. It's the yes. first step in that process. So Absolutely. then how do we move on? Yeah, so we wanna make sure that all of you um, are aware of this great release we're getting ready to share with all of you. Our book is soon is available and it is Think Differently. This allows you to you know, read and understand and take in all of the benefits of being able to think differently, but also strategies. And we wanna give you some opportunities to learn what you can do uh, to actually um, get a little snippet of that. And I'll hand that back to you, Sharon. Absolutely. So for those of you who are really interested in learning, what's in it for me? Why should I read this book? How will it impact my life? We'd like to ask you to reach out to us. Nina's email address, Dina at, you want to give it? Ace, yep, Dina, D-I-N-A at Ace, A-C-E, coaching, C-O-A-C-H-I-N-G-C-O, dot com dina at acecoachingco.com and sharon is sharon much easier at sharon m don't forget the m weinstein w-e-i-n-s-t-e-i-n dot com reach out to us and we will share with you a 12 page preview of the highlights that are in think differently 18 strategies to fix broken thinking this will give you just a snippet of information a taste of what is to come. I promise you that after reading through this small piece, and it won't take long, you'll be smitten with the content and you'll want to move on and advance forward. You will want to have your own copy and not only that, you will want to take advantage of the other offerings that we have, including our retreat in September, right, Dina? Yes, super excited. We've got a retreat that's in mid-Missouri. If you can get yourself to St. Louis, Missouri, this is an all-inclusive. We'll get your, your transportation to the retreat in Cuba, Missouri. This is an amazing ranch that sets out in the middle of, of Missouri. And uh, we are going to actually learn the art of thinking differently, the diagnostic thinking process, and actually give you some snippets and, and some opportunities to think about maybe becoming a facilitator potentially in the future for your company. So this is a groundbreaking experience and we want everyone to um, consider coming. It's very um, affordable um, and it is all inclusive. So it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's it. It's just that part of that weekend in September um, and it's gonna be around September the 18th and 19th. So we are super excited that uh, we could have you guys come. The other thing that we need to mention, Dina, is it is open to those who are employed by large companies, especially in the pharma and healthcare and bio life sciences and med device spaces, but also open to freelance consultants, individuals who are in business for themselves, who also can connect with us, align with us, and perhaps become licensed through us to provide the same type of information. So it is a huge opportunity for everyone, yeah. regardless of your background, regardless yeah. of where you are now, think about where you want to be, because we're the yeah. ones leading the way and directing that future. Yes. And this is groundbreaking. This is not something new. This has been vetted. It's been proven. I've done this with over 600 women around the globe. You know, Sharon and I have been helping companies evolve over these last pandemic um, couple of years, and we know that this works. So it's bridging the gap for diversity and inclusion. It's creating stronger meta leaders for men and women. And we're specifically starting out with women, obviously, because that's where a lot of our um, coaching has been focused on these last couple of years during pandemic times. But I will tell you, this is a game changer for everyone who wants to become a meta leader. And not only is it limited to those who are English speaking as a first language, but for those all over the globe, because those who have yes. participated in our program have been from all over the globe as far as India and beyond. So yes. I think that this is a huge opportunity for those of you who want to increase global exposure within your own organizations or within your own practices. Right. This is an opportunity to learn the steps that will allow you to take those next steps in your future. That next, yes. In that next chapter. Absolutely. And we're bridging the gap. There's a gap here, Sharon. We talked about this a lot. You know, this gap of how do we get from point A to point B? Folks, we have it. We have it. We'd love to share this with you. We want to obviously invite you in, experience this with us, go with us on this journey. And we're super excited to let you know that Think Differently is a game changer. 
It is a game changer that will move you from what is transactional to truly becoming transformational. Again, you have our email addresses. You know how to find us. You know how to reach out to us. Be sure when we post this video online that you comment on it. Reach out, connect with us on LinkedIn if you're not already connected. And let's see what we can do to start thinking differently in sync together. I love that. And let's start doing things that are creating better ways of getting things done. Signing off. Thanks to all of you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.